Hey guys, Jacques here. I'm going to do a series of video about the build of that clock and how to get the parts printed right, some tips and tricks on how to make it, and show all the hardware that's needed. You're not sure that you can build this clock. I have other ones that I made before that are much simpler. This one, I think it's one of the very first ones that I uploaded. Or this one, both of those are a good starting point if you want to try building a clock. One of the first thing is making the parts, uh, 3D printing the parts. Like this frame, it's 200 by 200 and it just fits on the bed of the printer but the thing is you need to make sure you can have good adhesion from one end of the part all the way to the other end of the part and all around you need to have your bed who is pretty well leveled I don't want to go over the bed leveling here, there's plenty of videos who talked how to do it. I just do it manually with a piece of paper and under the nozzle. But the only thing I do is preheat the bed so when I level it, it's at the right temperature. Another thing that's pretty important when you print, there's always a, what they call elephant foot. And you can see there's a little flat wider space. The first layer was the bottom of the gear. I printed it this way. So it made a elephant foot. So most slicer have a setting in Cura that I'm using its first layer expansion. You put a negative value. So it makes the first layer a bit smaller so you don't have the elephant foot. Elephant foot is going to be really important on a gear like this because you're going to lose the backlash that's needed for clock gears to work well without friction and hard point. Bed adhesion is also going to be challenging on this. It covers the diagonal of the bed from one end to the other. As far as tools that are needed, might be a good idea to have a vise, it's not absolutely necessary. But you need to have a way to cut those shafts and grind and to make them clean the right length. Piano wire can be cut with a, a good nipper, just put it all the way down the draw, it will work. Don't try to use those to cut piano wire that's not going to work. So if you don't have a shop that might be the most challenging thing but a Dremel with a cutting wheel will do it. Protect yourself. Don't grind in your eyes. And then hand tool. I have this round file. It's a file to sharpen chainsaw. It's 316 so 4.8 millimeters but it's nice and thin. Works well on PLA. Goes well cleaning those holes. Another way to clean the tools is to have a piece of sandpaper. Just roll it in a tube and you can adjust it at the diameter that you need. When you have parts you want to check all the teeth, make sure there's no little blob of filament that stays, you can cut it off. The teeth I will show you later, but when you put your clock together and run it, you can listen and you probably will hear if there's something left to clean up. And then just some simple pliers. You'll need a hammer that can be useful. Might be a good idea to have a, a caliper have this one. I really like it because as soon as you move it, it turns on and it has a memory. You don't have to reset it every time. That's, I just need to clean the drawers.
Okay, let's get started. Take apart that clock and see all the parts that are needed. So here are pretty much all the parts. And if I zoom in... And here's all the hardware. Some 5mm shaft, some 2mm shaft, there's some other small 5mm piece here for the ratchet. There's a bolt here that hooks up to the maintain spring. The maintain spring is a 1mm piano wire. I'll put all the dimension and details in the description of the video. One more thing that might help to have is some of those BB steel balls. I made also this shell for the weight. You can fill up with the BB balls. One section like this it's 800 grams when it's filled up with those steel balls so you can add as needed. The thing is I made a bigger hole at the bottom so the string or wire, piece of wire can go all across. That prevents having some layer separation here when you get starting to have a couple of kilos of weight pulling down. Also put some of the steel balls inside the rod. Take it off the rod. There's a hole to fill up. And once you put it back, they're here but they cannot come out. Symmetric 12 nut. You want some weight at the bottom of the bob anyway. <laughs> and then the last thing, you'll need a rod, at least three feet. Technically the pendulum, one second, a uh, two second pendulum is one meter. So I found those at a farm supply store. It pickets that are used for electric fence to keep livestock in. Or you can use uh, wood. It will work for that clock. Once you have all the parts printed, there are going to be some cleaning and checking to do first take a little wire and check all those holes that they work. That's the back frame for the escapement. There's a notch where the top of the pendulum is going to come in. Make sure it's clean, works out good. You have holes here also check the piece of piano wire. Goes in and out. It's going to make the assembly of the clock much easier. The way what I use just a wire I just cut it so it's a little bit tiny little bit wider than the nominal diameter so when you run it in it helps clean the bore. This gear needs to be spinning really freely. The hole in the middle is bigger so it's only the ends that needs to be clean. Just check both ends that it spins. The ratchet here, there's four pins 18 millimeters long. The pins need to hold in place. If they don't, just glue them. And then the, the gear itself needs to turn fairly freely. However, this part, that's the maintain disc. One side connects to the ratchet and the other side will have the maintain spring to the gear. But I decided to have this part fix on the gear so once it's in the clock it doesn't move too far away. When it's in the frame it only goes so far in the bearing but it doesn't go too far in that it rubs at the end. The other shaft that needs to be fixed is this gear. This gear it's the front gear up here and a good way to make sure it's square Take, for instance, the escape wheel, put your shaft in it. That was an early version, but so you have the shaft just coming out. Put the gear against. Now, you can be sure that this 
gear is square with the shaft then a piece of wood put it on the bench it's easier but once you have everything lined up you can take a hammer and that helps making that gear square let's see this one there's maybe a millimeter going back and forth it's not great but it's good enough for the clock at the other end of this that's where the clutch is that clutch allows to adjust the hands and the clutch it's this part it's quite a few things there's a notch going across there's two pieces of piano wire that goes so put one then put the second one both parallel shaft across it's pinched by those two it was too slippery for in my mind so added two nuts here and here metric three nuts and there's some screws tighten the screws it pushes that piano wire against the shaft and it makes it harder so you can adjust the clutch with those screws that are in here so there's a nut in here and then the screw comes here and then there's a last part that will hold a dishwasher again there's a hole so you can put the nut in here put my nut nut it in the hole hold it and then with the screw can come here and that will prevent this harbor to come out of the clutch gear there's one more metric free screw for the middle shaft here that holds the hands this in front here so when i put this across i can secure it on the front frame so it doesn't fall out there's one more thing to prepare for the build have those rods they're cylindrical in the middle they're flat so I could print flat on the printer the thing is to check that they go in the frame easy enough that you can push them by hand uh, check them everywhere check that it also goes in into the frame you want it to be fairly snug because that's going to guide all the parts together but still easy enough that you can just push them by hand and when this is starting to go through three or four different parts it every time goes a little bit harder so the front nuts will go all the way and then the back nuts have a hole so they can go as far as needed and you don't need a wrench to tighten up just hang tight is going to be plenty good <laughs> need to make sure they they go on nicely you could use the setting on the um, slicer to scale them up a percent or two percent more okay so when you have all those parts prepared then you can start putting it together, building the clock. That's the fun part. Okay, we'll see that in the next video. So, thank you for watching and stay tuned and watch the build in the next video. Thank you. Bye.